Go, go, go! Everyone, welcome to Practical GCP. Today, I would like to talk about BigQuery Storage Read API, which a, is a different way to read data from BigQuery, but efficiently and also with low cost. So there are already existing ways to read data from BigQuery, and these two are probably the ones you're mostly familiar with. So the first one is to use queries. Obviously, you run a SQL query on tables, join tables with views, whatever, and then you may save that data to a different table, which is typically a like a data modeling process, or you do some aggregations on your query to bring you know a small amount of data to uh, other places. So there's another way that you can export a large amount of data off out of BigQuery. So that typically goes into cloud storage. So this is the um, the way you can get a significant amount of data into another place in cloud storage and you typically don't run you know anything like filters or anything you just basically point to a table and then you say you want everything out into cloud storage right so those are the two ways that you can uh, export data at the moment and actually there's another way to do it as well via the storage read api so this is a very different method compared to the other two so the way it works is it utilizes the grpc protocol created by Google many years ago, which has been there subsequently open sourced. So it's basically a way that you can make remote procedure calls, you know, between different the clients and servers using whatever kind of different programming languages via protobuf, right? You can see it as a very, very efficient and fast way to access the other systems data or doing the transfer It's all in binary. So in this case, you can get data from BigQuery via the storage read API into other places, which could be downstream systems such as Apache Beam, Spark, or many other integrations. So one thing I would like to specifically mention is with the two kind of streams with the data formats, you obviously have Avril, but you also have this data format called Apache Arrow. So Apache Arrow, this is a probably not a very common thing depending on the area you work on you probably haven't heard about this before it's a language independent columnar memory format right so it's in memory and for flat and hierarchical data so this is as you can see is very you know very well compatible works really well with the BigQuery data structure right so it's been modernized and optimized for the modern CPUs and GPUs and the key thing with Arrow is the memory format support zero copy read. So what that means is it doesn't matter which programming languages you use, it doesn't actually, you know, has this overhead of serialization, deserialization, it's just takes, especially when you're dealing with a large amount of data, this can really get in your way, right, on getting the data from, you know, one framework to another. So this is typically a format supported by many different things, such as Apache Beam and Spark, and there's other any Monday integrations, especially in the data science workload, and often supports uh, Apache Arrow. So in summary, what this new way does is you use the storage read API to get data via the GERPC framework very, very efficiently and then fast into you know other places where you can process the data directly right this is very different to the other two so the other two is you always have to you know query this happens on BigQuery itself run lots of query using the you know the slot resources um, and you can very get a very small amount of data out and then on the other side you can export and it has to use cloud storage so none of these actually direct integration with large amount of data this one is totally different you get data in whatever the size out of BigQuery directly um, into, via the storage read API into other frameworks where you can actually process the data at volume, right? It's a very uh, powerful thing, but it's for very different purpose. So I want to do a bit of the quick uh, comparison on the cost because this is actually quite interesting if you look at it, right? So the one you typically use, especially for you know data analytics and modeling, and you would still use the query, right? This part is still going to be the mo most popular thing. And it's typically f around $5 per terabyte of scan, the data you use. Obviously, there's um, other kind of pricing, but this is all looking at on-demand pricing. 
And as I mentioned earlier, it's not designed to export large amount of data, right? It's mainly designed for querying and aggregations and the data doesn't actually get out of BigQuery. The second thing is specifically designed to get large amount of data outside of BigQuery. And especially when you have downstream systems that typically reads files, right? Not just directly processing, but it will read those files. So this operation is actually free up to 50 terabyte per day, but it has to go through cloud storage. So you can't actually get this to anywhere else. And also keep in mind, if you do cross regions, this would cost you money on egress costs as well. And this is the last one we're talking about, which is very interesting. So it costs about, if you look at the scan cost, right? So this is about $5, but this is the fifth. This is only about $1 per terabyte of read. And then you then get the also the read per month for free as well, which is quite interesting. It's not per day, right? This is quite a big difference, but it's per month. So try to get data out 300 terabyte per month it depends on your use case, but if your use case is downstream, let's say, um, let's such as Apache Beam and Spark, because also you're not actually just querying the table all the time, right? Because if you're doing an analytics workload, you might query the data once and twice or three times, you do a lot of stuff in there. But with this, you typically pull the data and store it in a cache, and then you do some downstream processing in there. So not only uh, the kind of the data you pull should be typically less, right, compared to the scan you directly do on BigQuery itself. But also, uh, it has a, a fifth of the cost compared to the normal scan when you use the query. And right, so that's the cost comparison on this. And the next thing I want to do is to show you uh, an example I've actually used this with. And so you can see how it can be used in the different scenarios. So I've got a BigQuery table here, right? So this BigQuery table is from the Google public data set. You've got the, the this is basically the name uh, popularity used by year and gender in the state of the United States. That's my understanding what this data set does. Um, so it's not very small. It's got 185 megabytes of data, right? And so what I'm trying to do is uh, I've written some code here. Uh, this is actually uh, the two examples I've used. Uh, one is uh, obviously both uses this data set, but one uses the, just a simple fetch to get the data using the uh, Python SDK for the storage API. And the other one is actually a distributed solution too. So this is where it gets mostly useful because uh, what it gives you is a, it's a lot of parallel streams, right? That you can, uh, you can you can use in downstream system to dis do distributed processing, right? That's when it makes it a lot more powerful. And one of the things that it supports is uh, is uh, Apache Beam that has a connector to it. So let's have a quick look at this. So the simple solution, this is the example I modified from the Google example. Unfortunately, I think the Google example is a bit broken. Uh, so I've, it's, it's, like, it's got some tiny issues, so I've kind of just fixed those. Um, you can see these are just hard coded for those uh, examples use case. Um, and uh, here, where you you can see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it supports Avril or Apache Avril. But in this case, I'm just using Avril, so you can see that uh, the data is a bit easier in this case. Um, I've set the uh, selected fields. Uh, keep in mind that when you read the BigQuery table, uh, one of the things that is um, quite efficient is it still you know, utilize the column the storage, right? So if you only put three columns in there, it would not charge you the scan for the whole table. So that's another thing. And one of the very important thing is you can actually do filtering, right? This is not just, um, so as far as I know, the, the, the export option to get data into cloud storage, you can't actually filter by it, right? So you can just, you just have to point to a table and get the whole thing out. Um, so at least that's how I've used it before. So this one, it has a filter option. So you can say the row restrictions uh, is state equals to WA, right? That in this case, it will only get the data out uh, with, with, with that filter, which means the amount of data you scan, uh, sorry, uh, if you have partitions, the amount of data you scan, would be much less, right? If it depends on the filters. Um, but if you um, just need to fetch less data, right? This is going to, you know, transfer less data as well. So it's a very useful feature to have the filter in there. And 
the mistake then there is, is many the timestamp. In the Google example, the timestamp has been using, I think it's probably from a previous library, but this one is, is part of the, uh, the, the protobuf internal types that it will need to use. Because one of the things you can do with the uh, with the the fetch the data is not only you can fetch it from the current time, but you can also actually use a snapshot from the past as well, which is very useful in some use cases. Right. Finally, it's just uh, it, uh, if you look at this, this is quite interesting. It in this example is only been specifying you know one stream, right? As I mentioned earlier, this can give you a lot of parallel streams for you to do distributed processing, but this is just example with one stream so you can see what it looks like. So at the end, it reads the rows and then it iterates the rows in a single stream in this particular case and print them out, right? So if I show you this code I have run in IDE, so you can see this runs and then uh, basically put it in the sets and it does a it does a count, right? In here you've got 6,482, right? Unique names in, in, this, uh, in this state. Um, so back to the second one. So the second one is where the power comes from, in right with the with the distributed processing that allows you to, you know, read directly from a, a, a BigQuery table. So in this case, uh, what it does is you can use this read from BigQuery uh, library uh, to set the method of read into a direct read. Uh, so I'll come back to a little bit uh, on this because the documentation on Beam is not actually very obvious. Uh, so you can specify the table, which is a fully codified name with a project with a column plus data set and the table name. Uh, and finally, you can do a filter. So in this case, just for the sake of not, you know, s spamming my screen, uh, I've actually filtered it by not only the state, but also the year. Uh, I map this into a bunch of tuples and then counted by key then print it out right so if you look at the second example in here uh, I've also got it in here running so when it runs this just uses the local beam uh, runner you process the data and does the counting and aggregations there you go right straightforward so a few things I would like to mention here because uh, it took me a bit of time to figure out where things actually are. So these are the things you can uh, use to run. Um, the one of the things I want to mention is when you pointing to this data set, right? Because um, the way it works is keep in mind this is not like the you know you have the big query job runner role that it doesn't actually isn't a job a big query job it runs is actually using this BigQuery read sessions. Uh, it may need create and also more than that. Um, but the reason I knew this was because it, is, it has to create a session, right, to get your data within that session. Uh, but if you try to point to the public data set in here, right, then you, this is the Google's project, right? You never get permission such as uh, read sessions to that project because this is how you're gonna get charged. Uh, on the you know on the cost right, so this means it will not work with another project that if you actually don't have this role right this this permission in there. So what I've done is I've copied the uh, the table from the BigQuery set. That's why in here I set the project ID and also the table ID the pro table with the project ID that is also on my own project. So I copied across uh, as you can see in here I've got it in here right and then. Um, I've done the uh, I point to that one to do the to do the uh, the streaming right because that's where the cost is associated with this, with my project but you cannot if you do not have permission to do this on another project so and I, you would not be able to uh, stream data from that so this is actually quite interesting thing because in some organizations where you have a different part in the uh, different kind of areas you may have you know the cost model might be different depending on you know who owns what right with the job user side when you run queries it's actually very straightforward because the person running the stuff always kind of running in their own project but this you actually directly point to the source tables right and then if you, you try, you're trying to directly use this so it doesn't actually work so uh, at the end of the day the reason you probably want to use these things you may have already done some transformations right on the on the tables 
as I mentioned earlier, you may still, well, you should primarily use the uh, the query part of it right? and then model your data. Why don't you get your data to a degree, like to a very clean or relatively clean state? Then you may want to export into Beam or uh, uh, Spark to do more uh, kind of distributed processing for you know, some advanced analytics, right? So that's that's quite a like a different use case. So you typically have your data already processed and sits within your project, and then you export it, right? So this shouldn't really be a problem, and it, you it may be very rare case you might even have the problem trying to point to a source data, but it should be quite rare because usually you have some process already happening, right? Okay, a few more things to mention here. Uh, the Beam documentation seems to be out of date in here. So if you look at this, uh, look at the reading from BigQuery with the uh, storage read API. Here it says the Beam SDK for Piper does not support the BigQuery storage API. There's an issue case that's been mentioned. So when I look into this, I realize this pull request has already been closed. Uh, in fact, uh, you know where it says it's not supported, that's not actually true because um, if you keep on reading, this is the read from BigQuery class in uh, the current version of Beam, um, which I think is 2.41. So if you look at this, where it says uh, it may be export or direct read. So if it's direct read, then it uses the BigQuery read API. So this is fully supported in the Python SDK as well, right? In addition to the Java one. So uh, yeah, the last two things is uh, the filtering is actually quite, it's not actually documented. If you look at this, there isn't anything, you know, talking about that filtering stuff in this, in, in here. So what I found out by looking through the source code is actually, uh, if you look into the custom BigQuery storage source, there is a uh, section where you can specify the load restrictions, which is the one I've been using. But I'm just kind of pointing to you, you know, where this thing is, right? So you can see, uh, in this class, right, you have the role restrictions. This one is what you need to specify when using the uh, read from BigQuery class, right? So last thing is, I uh, found it quite interesting and useful article uh, around Apache Spark BigQuery connector. So you can uh, read this on media, uh, which is quite important, but you can see it's actually supporting many other things as well. Uh, with pandas, TensorFlow, and Spark. So this is actually, you know, some very, when you need to do some very advanced uh, downstream processing, especially in the data science uh, ML workload, this could become very, very handy. And especially with cost consideration, this will be much, much lower, right? So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I want to cover. Uh, there's a few pages I think I would like to mention that you probably want to read. Uh, one is this, use the BigQuery storage read API uh, read table to read table data page. Uh, this is basically what I've been through. There's some key features in there, such as the multiple streams. This is the, what allows to do, do the distributed processing. Uh, and then column projection, this is where it still maps to the BigQuery columns, right? So it's, it saves you cost if you don't scan uh, all of the columns. The filtering, as I mentioned already, and snapshot consistency, where you can actually go to the current one or go to the previous one. Um, but as I mentioned, this is just a. This does have some limitations. You can only read tables, right? This, which means storage, but you can't read, uh, you know, logical or materialized views. In summary, I would say this is primarily used for after your data is cleaned, right, and then you model your data uh, to a degree, um, and you need you know, fast access f into the BigQuery table level, which has a lot of clean data that you already modeled and you want to use to do some advanced analytics or uh, data science processing, right? So that can be linked to Beam, Spark, and any, any, uh, any other sources. Um, the storage read IP API is a much more efficient way uh, to read data from BigQuery, but it's not designed for the same purpose like querying or just track data into the cloud storage bucket. It's designed for direct streaming in memory processing for downstream systems to do advanced stuff. Okay, that's the end of the session. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time. Go, go, go out.